In today's world, it seems like robots are everywhere. They've become fully integrated into our society. But have you ever wondered about their history or origin? For example, when was the first robot made? Who called them robots? And more importantly, are they going to take over the world? The History of the Robot, Part 1 Let's start with the obvious first question. What is a robot? In order to define what a robot is, let's begin by looking at the word itself and when it was first used. The year is 1921 and a Czech playwright called Karol Kapek wrote a play titled R.U.R. Rosomovi Universalni Roboti. Rosomovi Universalni Roboti. Or in English, Rossum's Universal Robots. At the time, robots was a brand new word, but very similar to existing words. I'll get on to that a bit later. The play R.U.R. is about artificial beings who are built to be factory workers, working as slaves to make money for the factory owner. Eventually, these beings start a rebellion. They rise up against their human owners and eventually take over the world. It is a dystopian tale which raises many new questions about control and the potential consequences of creating new life forms. The robots in Capex play are built on an assembly line like cars, not formed in metal or other man-made materials, but instead by a mysterious new material discovered by Rossum. This new organic material gives the robots human flesh and blood and the ability to think for themselves. They were more like human clones than mechanical monsters. So back to the title of the play. Are you are Rosumovi Uven Rosumovi Universalni Roboti? Thanks. The term roboti or robot in English is very similar to an old Slavic word robota, which in turn descended from the old East Slavic word robota and the old Church Slavonic word robota. All these words had similar meanings. Robota meant forced labour or servitude which means the state of being a slave, especially one who has to work for their owner. Robota also meant drudgery, which is hard or dull work. So this new word robot had its roots in both the word slave and hard work. But what caught the imagination of those that saw the play and wrote about it was the artificial nature of Capek's creations. The fact that these robots were created by us looked exactly like us could think for themselves and might have the power to rise up against us and cause the end of human existence. That's what gave this new word power and intrigue. It set the word apart from its origins. Carol Capek later revealed that it was his older brother and painter, Joseph Capek, who thought of the new word. Since then, many artists, writers and thinkers in the world of science fiction have taken the concept of robots and evolved it into what it is today. Today the word robot is difficult to define, but many agree that they are types of machines that can do complex tasks automatically. Some argue that a robot also needs to have a degree of autonomy. In a word, it all comes down to control. Who controls their actions and by how much? If each action is directly controlled by us, then it's probably not a robot. But if a machine can control some actions based on a set of pre-programmed rules, then it's probably a robot. Fully autonomous robots control all their actions and behaviours, but still based on rules we've set in advance. On top of all this, I would argue that for a robot to be a robot, they must also move in a lifelike way or have a lifelike appearance. It's the mimicry of life that gives robots a sense of intelligence. Take your mobile phone, for example. It's a complex machine that can do many things automatically and autonomously, but would you call it a robot? So were there robots before the play of 1921? Well, yes and no. We've had machines that could do things automatically, even move in lifelike ways, but were not autonomous. These machines are called automaton. An automaton is a type of machine that can, in some small way, control itself what we call a self-operating machine. There are accounts of automata dating back as far as the 10th century BC in China. Homer, the legendary ancient Greek poet and writer, no, not that one, 
is said to have invented the word automaton when describing the tripod machines created by Hephaestus in the ancient Greek legends. He described automata as acting of one's own will. Automaton became increasingly popular in medieval times. There are accounts of mechanical birds and roaring lions in the throne room of Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII, as well as wind-powered statues in the Palace of the Golden Gate in Baghdad. During the Renaissance period, examples of automaton include the astronomical clock in Prague, built in 1410, and Leonardo da Vinci's designs for a mechanical knight in 1495, the sketches for which were only recently discovered in 1950. Leonardo's robot could stand, sit, raise its visor, and raise each arm through a series of pulleys and cables. Almost all automaton hide the way they move. Hidden gears, cams, and cables give their actions a sense of mystery and wonder. They were a spectacle. By hiding the way they work, they hide their truth, making it easier to imagine that they are moving by themselves. By hiding the how, we gave them life. Moving forward to the 19th century, advancements in mechanical engineering during the Industrial Revolution opened a path for machines to do more and more automated tasks. They made things and made things efficiently. It started the trend of machines replacing humans by doing the jobs we once did. In the 20th century, with the invention of the computer chip, we gave machines a brain. Computer technology paved the way for them to become truly independent thinkers. The autonomous robots of today are much more like Capex's original vision than any previous examples through history. So a robot is a machine, a complex machine that can perform complicated tasks, especially in an automatic way. Automaton are simple machines that perform simple tasks, also in automatic ways. Without a clear definition of a robot, it's best to think of robots as part of a, a continual evolution of machines. A robot is a type of automaton, and in turn an automaton is a type of machine, and a machine is just a type of tool. Robots don't always resemble humans or animals, but it is these types of robots that fascinate us the most. They're like showing a mirror up to ourselves. We see ourselves in them, our traits and talents, our fears and failings. Having something as recognisable as a face also makes it easier for us to interact with them and form an emotional connection. So what have we learned? The first machines with lifelike qualities were probably made in ancient China around 1000 BC. The first verifiable humanoid machine, more like how we think of robots today, is probably Leonardo da Vinci's Mechanical Knight, designed in 1495. The word robot was first invented in 1921 by Joseph Capek, painter and brother of Czech playwright Karol Capek. And in the late 1920s, the first examples of electronic humanoid robots were built, likely in part due to the huge influence of Fritz Lang's cinematic masterpiece, Metropolis which was released on the 10th of January, 1927. Such robots include Ron Wensley's telephone assistant robot called Televox, and a voice activated robot called Electro that could even smoke cigarettes and inflate balloons. Most of these early 20th century examples were able to perform tasks automatically, but not autonomously. The first autonomous robots were built later in the mid 20th century. So here's my evolution of the robot. In the 10th century BC, we built the first robot-like machines and gave them the power of movement and a voice. In the 15th century, we gave these machines an audience. In the 19th century, we gave them improved limbs and thus the ability to make things. In the early 20th century, we gave them a pulse with electricity and a new name. They mastered maths very quickly. In the late 20th century, we gave robots a brain along with senses to understand our world. And in the 21st century, we are beginning to nurture their brains. We are teaching them our language. Hey Alexa. We are teaching them how to keep their balance. We are teaching them how to recognize objects as well as people. And we are even teaching them how to drive. They sure are growing up fast. Let's hope they don't rebel too much during this adolescence period, or we may have a rebellion on our hands.